Hello, my name is Ana Paula Arato Gonçalves. I'm a research associate at the Getty Conservation Institute, where my current work is focused on conservation of concrete. First, I'd like to thank the Docomomo International Conference for the opportunity to share this work with my fellow colleagues. In this presentation, I'll talk about the context for the publication, Conservation Principles for Concrete of Cultural Significance, published by the GCI in English in 2020 and in Spanish and in French in 2021. Susan McDonald and I co-authored this publication and our goal was to guide decisions in the conservation of culturally significant concrete by establishing a methodology that combines concrete repair and conservation approaches. So the publication focuses on presenting a framework for decision-making without giving specific guidance on repair and treatment. The first premise we adopted is that conservation of concrete requires the same thoughtful, careful approach as other materials more typically associated with heritage sites. The conservation principles for concrete follows the typical conservation process from widely adopted conservation charters and guiding documents. The main point of convergence with these documents is the grounding of all work on the identification of the significance of a site and the challenges to conserve it. The, are, the other premises adopted relate to concrete repair. We recognize that standards and best practices in concrete repair can be successfully used in concrete conservation as long as there is clarity from the start of the project of the conservation principles guiding the decision-making process. We also recognize that concrete conservation presents a higher level of complexity than everyday concrete repair. We see the collaboration between the concrete repair and conservation fields as essential, since each one of them contributes a key part of the expertise needed in the conservation of concrete. But in order to work together, we need a, set, a shared methodology to solve the conflicts that can come from trying to balance concrete repair and conservation requirements. For example, there could be potential impact of typical concrete repair and evaluation techniques on mat material authenticity due to the loss of original material. A repair material designed to have compatible performance and aesthetic to the aged concrete results in a mix different from the original concrete. The difficulty of designing and executing repairs that will develop patina like the original porous concrete while protecting the reinforcement. To help practitioners deal with these conflicts, we proposed a concrete conservation process, which you see here in this flowchart. This process is cyclic. It starts with project planning, followed by understanding the building and conservation needs, develop conservation strategy, implementation, and maintenance and monitoring, which can trigger the restart of the process. In the project planning step, the first key point is to have a collaborative multidisciplinary team in line with current conservation practice. These professionals have complementary skills and the need for each will vary according to the needs of the project. It is recommended that in all cases, they should be highly experienced, so they will be better prepared to deal with the added complexities of concrete conservation. Conservators are the only category unfamiliar to ordinary concrete repair, but their experience with building materials and craft is especially valuable when the aesthetic of the repair can impact the site's cultural significance. The next point, is about clearly defining the project goals and creating a shared understanding with all stakeholders. The ultimate goal should always be to retain cultural significance of a place. This is the key difference between everyday concrete repair and concrete conservation. As a result, these projects have added complexity due to the higher level of care necessary to avoid the loss of attributes of the concrete and of the material itself 
because they contribute to the cultural significance of that place. As in any conservation project, it is also necessary to identify and engage with all stakeholders, identify their expectations and the roles they should play. The last point is about identifying regulatory requirements, including heritage authorities, local building codes, safety and accessibility standards. The next step is to understand the building and the concrete in a specific by gathering all the necessary information to guide the decisions that will shape the conservation of that heritage. This process involves multiple sub-steps that can be iterative. Similar to any other conservation project, you should start by understanding the cultural significance of that site which values and characteristics contribute to that significance and how does the concrete relate to it. Some sites already have well-defined statements of significance or even a conservation management plan that you can refer to. At the end of this exercise, you should have a good understanding of why that concrete should be preserved and what level and type of change it can support without losing the characteristics that make it important. This information will constitute key criteria in the development of a conservation strategy. The next steps focus on understanding the physical condition of the concrete and are much more closely related to concrete repair guiding documents, especially ACI 364. The investigation of concrete should follow best practices from the concrete field with care to minimize damage that certain techniques can cause on significance. The investigation on the physical conditions should start with a preliminary investigation. This process includes a review of existing documentation, identification of conditions complemented with non-destructive evaluation techniques, and it can include examination of loose material found on site. Depending on how much information is already known about, about the concrete, this work may conclude that detailed investigation is needed. Detailed investigation will likely include techniques that can damage the surface of the concrete. Therefore, it is important to carefully consider the need and benefits of these results against possible threats to significance. We advocate for prioritizing the use of NDE techniques, but recognizing that inspection openings and sampling are needed to guarantee reliability of results. In addition, engaging an experienced team of testing specialists will contribute in developing an investigation strategy that will maximize results while minimizing loss of original material. Monitoring of conditions should also be considered at this stage. And if the structural performance of the concrete is in question, a structural evaluation performed by a qualified professional should be included. In addition to physical condition, the evaluation of the building should also take in consideration external factors that can affect the feasibility and long-term sustainability of a conservation strategy. This should include identification of threats and opportunities, identification of user and stakeholder needs that may need to be negotiated if in conflict with preservation of significance, identification of constraints such as resources, and availability of technology, materials, and experienced craftspeople. Once all the necessary data has been gathered, it should be analyzed to reveal the factors affecting the significance of the building and the requirements for a successful conservation strategy. As I mentioned before, the ultimate goal of a conservation strategy is conservation of the significance of the building, but this cannot be achieved if it does not balance concrete repair and conservation requirements. Here are some of the criteria recommended. Address causes of deterioration, long-term durability. Consider feasibility, maintenance, and sustainability. Minimize the risk of negative impact on significance by doing as little as possible and only as much as necessary selecting compatible materials and methods, 
matching the aesthetic quality of the original surface when the concrete has aesthetic value, avoiding experimental techniques, among other criteria. It is recommended by both conservation and concrete repair fields to consider advantages and disadvantages of different degrees of intervention, from doing nothing and monitoring to demolition and reconstruction of concrete elements that are beyond salvation and threatening user safety. The different options should be compared by applying the conservation criteria. It is important to realize that concrete conservation criteria can severely limit the repair and treatment options that are appropriate in each case, and that achieving optimal results under all criteria may be unfeasible. In such cases, any compromises should be justified and long-term consequences well understood by the team and stewards of the site. In line with Preservation Briefs 15 and ACI 546, once a conservation strategy is defined, it is essential to conduct trials and mock-ups. This part of the work is key in the success of the results. It is inevitably an, an iterative process, well worth the required time, budget, and patience. Trials and mock-ups should mimic the conditions and skill level expected for site work, but should first be conducted off the structure. Once in the final stages of development, the trials and mock-ups should be done in a discrete location on the building that is representative of typical conditions. This process often involves testing of repairs and treatments to verify that they meet specifications and designed performance. If the concrete conservation strategy involves concrete repair and application of treatments, these should be done following local standards, safety, and environmental regulations. Both concrete repair and conservation fields identify employing craftspeople with the right skill level as key in the successful implementation. Before work can start, the contractors should be offered on-site training to clearly define expectations and standards for the work. A quality control plan should be developed and adopted in all phases of implementation. The conservation work should be documented and the record of the work provided to the owner. The final step in the concrete conservation process is maintenance and monitoring, which is unsurprisingly a common point between conservation and concrete repair. The goal is to delay deterioration and increase durability of repairs and treatments not only because this is a cost-effective and sustainable way of managing the structure, but also because it prevents further loss of original material by minimizing the need for repairs. The concrete maintenance activities should be integrated into a broader building maintenance plan. Monitoring should include the periodic inspection of repairs and treated areas to check if they are performing according to expectation. The conservation strategy can also include monitoring deterioration. In these cases, there should be a clear threshold to trigger mitigation action. In conclusion, Conservation Principles for Concrete of Cultural Significance advocates for the adoption of an approach to concrete conservation that merges well-established methodologies in the field of conservation and of concrete repair. It recognizes that there might be instances where these practices may be in conflict, but that solutions that balance both are ultimately the most effective in achieving the goal of conserving cultural significance of sites where concrete plays an important role. You can see how these concepts have been applied in practice in the case studies presented in this book, which is part of our case study series in the conservation of modern heritage. Thank you for your attention and a special thank you to all the peer reviewers that helped us in the development of the conservation principles for concrete.